So we're considering the complications caused by venous hypertension. Now what we have here is this is a normal capillary. So these are the vascular endothelial cells here, each with their own individual nucleus. So this could be a capillary and a lot of this physiology applies to the venules as well. So normally the blood is moving along here. The red cells are moving along here. And then it's going to drain into a larger venule here. These are other capillaries also draining into a larger venule. And of course this venule drains into a larger vein. But the problem is in the chronic venous hypertension is here we have back pressure. So the veins are damaged, the valves are compromised and the blood is damming back. Because there's high pressure in the veins, the blood's going to damn back because there's venous incompetence. And what this means is that if there's back pressure here, is that going to make it easier or harder for the blood to flow along and get out of the capillary? Well, if there's back pressure there, can you see that's going to make it harder for the blood to get along? So there's going to be reduced flow rates. The blood is going to flow more slowly than would normally be the situation. Because even although the arteries are healthy, it's able to get in here normally from the arterial. Because it can't get out, it can't get through the capillary quickly. So there's going to be reduced flow rates through the capillary. And that's also going to increase the hydrostatic pressure. Now the hydrostatic pressure is the blood pressure within this vessel. Because the blood can't get out, there's going to be an effective congestion of blood within the vessel. So we've got reduced flow rates and we've got increased hydrostatic pressure. Now, if there's reduced flow rates, can you see that those reduced flow rates will mean that there's going to be reduced flowing of glucose to the tissues because remember the tissue cells are going to be located here in these tissue spaces. So the cells are going to get reduced amounts of glucose. And of course they need glucose, it's an essential metabolic substrate. And also they're going to get reduced amounts of amino acids. Amino acids are the essential building blocks of proteins. So it's going to be harder to maintain the viability of these cells because it's going to be harder to repair them because we haven't got the amino acids to repair them. To make collagen, of course, you need vitamin C. And the tissues also need a range of vitamins. But again, there's going to be less vitamins getting to the cells, less fatty acids. There's going to be less minerals. All the essential nutrients are going to have reduced delivery rates because of the reduced flow rates. Now another problem is when there's reduced flow rates the white cells tend to get a bit trapped. So here for example we have a uh, white cell. This one's a neutrophil with the multi-lobe nucleus, normally between three and five lobes, the polymorphonuclear cells. So there we have a, a neutrophil. And if the neutrophils can't get through, 
and the other white cells can't get through, then they get a bit clogged up and they tend to get adhered to the wall of the vessel. Now, white blood cells, the leukocytes, are very useful because they contain digestive enzymes that can digest viruses and bacteria. That's brilliant. But here they've got trapped. So as a result of the reduced flow rate, we have this problem called leukocyte trapping. So we have leukocyte trapping. And what this means is that some of these digestive enzymes that are contained in the cytoplasm of the leukocytes, in this case the neutrophil, some of these start to leak out. So we get leaking out of enzymes which can digest proteins, proteolytic enzymes. These proteolytic enzymes can digest protein. They are protein digesting. And also oxygen free radicals. are released from the leukocytes. And these can oxidize pretty well anything, damaging it. Now you probably know that lining the capillary, there's a basement membrane. These vascular endothelial cells actually sit on a basement membrane. Very thin basement membrane, but absolutely essential. So we need this basement membrane for the vascular endothelial cells to sit on very fine connective tissues. But what happens is the enzymes and the oxygen free radicals from the trapped leukocytes start damaging the basement membrane. So these damage basement membrane. So we get damage to the basement membrane. And if you can see, if you damage the basement membrane, then the cells don't know where to sit and you get compromise of the circulation. We're going to get reduced blood circulation or reduced vasculature resulting in reduced circulation. So, so far we've got reduced delivery of nutrients, we've got reduced circulation of the blood. Now, because there's back pressure here, there's going to be increased pressure in this vessel. So what I've got here is like a, this is like a cross section of a capillary or a, a venule, one of the small blood vessels. So we're now looking at it in a cross section. We notice each cell has its own individual nucleus. There's very small gaps for water and nutrients and things to go in and out of, that's normal. But because there's increased pressure in here, can you see there's now increased pressure in here, that's going to tend to force these cells apart. And if we force the cells apart, I think you can see there's now much bigger gaps between the individual cells. So we're going to get dilated vessels as a result of the reduced blood flow and the increased hydrostatic pressure. So now we've got dilated blood vessels. Now that's going to, because the vessels are dilated, can you see it's going to make it easier for the water molecules to get out because they're now dilated. So we're going to get edema. So there's going to be edema in the tissues. And as well as that, because the vessels are dilated, one of the clotting proteins that is normally retained within the vessel is going to be able to escape. And this is the fibrinogen. So the fibrinogen is going to be able to escape. And this is the clotting protein. 
Now in normal coagulation, the fibrinogen is converted to fibrin. And over time that will happen. So the fibrinogen that has escaped will be converted to fibrin. And this fibrin will form long sticky strands around about the capillary. So we get fibrin strands coalescing around the capillary. This is called a fibrin cuff. So we're going to go to a fibrin cuff. And that's going to reduce the amount of oxygen that can get from the blood to the cells and reduce the amount of waste products that can get from the cells back into the blood. Now also because there's reduced flow rates, Another problem we're going to get is reduced numbers of red cells, so re reduced red cell passage, reduced red cell flow rates, less red cells going through. And of course it's the red cells that carry the oxygen, so that means there's going to be reduced amounts of oxygen delivered to the tissue cells. And if there's reduced amounts of oxygen, we call this hypoxia. So hypoxia is lack of oxygen at the level of the tissues. There's going to be hypoxia. And in fact, the fibrin cuff will contribute to the hypoxia because it's forming a physical barrier. And the reduced circulation of the blood will also contribute to the hypoxia because of the reduced numbers of red cells. Now, as well as not getting enough things to the tissues, the reduced flow rates is going to mean it's harder to remove waste products. So we're going to get reduced removal of waste. So we can't get rid of the carbon dioxide. There's going to be increased carbon dioxide. And that gives rise to carbonic acid. Because the carbon dioxide plus the water gives rise to carbon dioxide. Sorry, it gives rise to carbon, carbonic acid. So the increased amounts of carbon dioxide interact with the water forming carbonic acid, which of course is an acid. And as well as that, if there's reduced amounts of oxygen, then the metabolism is going to change from aerobic to anaerobic, and that's going to give us lactic acid. The lactic acid. So you can see we've got carbonic acid and lactic acid. That of course is going to decrease the pH. It's going to make it acidic and enzymes therefore will not function properly. We're going to get reduced enzyme function. Because the functioning of the intracellular enzymes depends on an accurate pH. So the waste is not removed, the carbon dioxide builds up the carbon dioxide interreacts or reacts with the water giving rise to carbonic acid and the anaerobic metabolism gives rise to lactic acid. So we do need tissue viability and we do need wound healing sometimes. And all of these things that we've discussed are going to adversely impact on this. So there's reduced nutrients, all the nutrients, that's going to interfere with tissue viability and wound healing. The tissues are going to be embarrassed and compromised. The reduced blood circulation is going to interfere with tissue viability and wound healing. Oxygen is absolutely essential for wound healing so the hypoxia will reduce tissue viability. And the acidic environment will reduce enzyme function, which will mean that the cells 
the enzymes in the cells can't function, can't maintain the life of the cell normally and can't recover. The edema, because it's edematous, well, the edema is going to increase the diffusional distance for all nutrients. And indeed, it's going to increase the diffusional distance for oxygen. So that will contribute to the hypoxia. Because if there's a lot of tissue fluid between the capillaries in the cells, it's going to be harder for the oxygen to get across. It's already hard because of this fibrin cuff. So that will further exacerbate the hypoxia, which will further exacerbate tissue viability and wound healing. So the chronic venous hypertension is going to reduce the viability of the tissues. And if these factors mean that there's not enough oxygen, there's not enough nutrients, there's too much waste products for the tissue cells to survive, they will simply die. And even if the patient is able to maintain the viability of their tissues, all they often need to do is have a little wound and you'll get tissue breakdown because there's no reserve in the tissues for healing. So all these adverse effects on the tissues are occurring as a result of the increased hydrostatic pressure in the veins, the disorder of the valves in the veins, meaning venous drainage is reduced, causing raised venous pressure, causing this back pressure, and this back pressure has all of these adverse effects on the viability of the tissue and on wound healing.